he's the shove it man. All right, it's Ring of the Hawk season three. Let's go. This season, we're focusing on tag teams. I admit I've been slacking. Someone needs to give me a good smacking. Today's video was a Patreon request from a little man who's had to wait an extremely long time for this video to be made. So apologies to Marcus Moore. If you want to make the Hawk talk, sign up today. And of course, if you know a wrestler that can do the J-O-B to the H-J-W-K any night, any day, <coughs> shove their name in the comments, Jack. Okay, okay, the Straight Edge Society. It's not a good time to start sobriety. Yes, Marcus Moore's request was for Luke Gallows, but that doesn't really fit the narrative I'm trying to tell this season. So to quote the Hawkster, I'm making this video whether you like it or not, brother. My personal opinion on Luke Gallows is not a positive one. This is going to be an impartial review overall, and hopefully I can be proved wrong. But from what I've seen of him in Rinker King and TNA, he is dull as ditch water. But at least CM Punk is also going to be in this video. I know he's not exactly popular at the time of making this video, but he was at the time of the Strayed Society. And for the record, we're going to be watching any matches where Punk and Gallows tag together, even if it's an eight-man tag. So where do we start then? It's December 2009. Gallows has just had a short hiatus from TV after finishing up playing the character Festus. This was a nice little run for him, but it had run its course. Meanwhile, CM Punk had just come off a World Heavyweight title reign. So I guess they wanted to have something new for him to do, and this would be a change in the character's direction for both of them. CM Punk brings Gallows to the ring. Ish revealed he was formerly Festus, and the reason for his change in appearance is that he was addicted to pills, and Punk has cleaned him up. They are the Straight Edge Society. Match 1, Smackdown Tag. CM Punk and Luke Gallows taking on R-Truth and Matt Hardy. The entrance is pretty funny here because Matt Hardy has handed out some DVDs of his brother Jeff. But at the same time as Truth's music is playing, there's sound bites from Punk screaming, don't watch this DVD. He compares handing out the DVD to peddling drugs. Punk is smacked straight out of the ring with a microphone and Gallows lovingly checks on him. Punk makes it back to the ring and he's knocked down by Truth a couple of times and clothesline from the ring. Truth and Hardy have a double hip toss into a double elbow drop. Punk eventually turns it around with a suplex across the ropes. Gallows gets the tag and nails Truth with a gut buster. Gallows is a man who looks fat, muscly and skinny all at the same time. Punk back in he connects with a snap slam for a two count. He blows a kiss to Matt Hardy just before hitting a set out suplex. Another tag to Gallows and he applies a bear hug. Truth fights it off and starts a comeback, but he walks straight into a boot. Punk returns to the match with a kick to the gut followed by a back suplex. The crowd are not amused with his antics. He takes too long and his springboard is countered by a drop kick from Truth. Matt Hardy has the hot tag. He gives Punk a cross back breaker. Matt's all over him like a bad shirt. He pulls Punk into the corner into a power bomb. The Matt Hardy leg drop can't end it and Gallows breaks the pin up. Truth takes Gallows out of a big kick. Punk throws Truth out the ring. Matt Hardy and Punk keep reversing each other. There's a blind tag from Gallows and Hardy does manage the twist of fate, but Gallows immediately big boops him. And there's a big choke bomb from Gallows for the three. Wow, I'm actually shocked they won their first match. I'm so used to watching jobbers from this era. Maybe this could be something good. There were some nice moves in this match and it was a nice nine minute match without a single boring moment. And an entertaining pre-match promo from CM Punk. As far as debuts go, it's an A. Oh, what yeah. more could you ask for? Match two, Smackdown six man tag. John Morrison, Matt Hardy and R-Truth versus Drew McDonald. Wow, complete silence for the IC Champions entrance. And the Straight Edge Society. Hardy and Punk to start. Punk throws a kick, but he's caught and smacked in the face. Truth joins the match and they knock down Punk and Hardy double teams with him. Drew McDonald's in now, so we can ignore this part of the match. We come back from an advert break with Morrison kicking Punk in the face. Morrison wants to hit him with the springboard, but McDonald stops him. Gallows gets his first involvement now, whilst Morrison is starting a comeback. He turns around into a big boot from Gallows. The commentary team are reading out prayers on commentary. It's really weird to hear. Gallows with another big boot to Morrison's face now. He whips Morrison hard into the corner and tags into McDonald. He doesn't do well and he has to tag Gallows back. Gallows does an elbow drop for a two count. A nice uppercut follows and Punk has the tag. He and Gallows hang Morrison upside down and kick him in the ribs. Punk and Gallows are making regular tags. It's Gallows with a two on a net breaker. The power moves continue. Gallows hits a backbreaker and at the same time Punk flies from the top with a knee drop. Some of that's just a two for Punk. Morrison looks like he's almost dead. Punk attempts go to sleep but Morrison isn't dead and he almost tries to roll Punk up. They both lock eyes. It looks really funny for some reason and Morrison rushes to tag Matt Hardy in. 
Hardy gives Punk a bulldog for a two count, and he quickly follows that up a second rope elbow and a net breaker. Just another two. Side effect from Matt Hardy now. It feels like in this era, people hit more slams and throws. The match breaks down and the ref is distracted. Punk hits Matt Hardy in his lard with a slammy trophy, and that gives the Straight Society a three. They are surprisingly a good team, and I'm actually liking this so far. And they added a double team move here and there as well. It's a beat. Match three, SmackDown, eight man tag. How original. What's next, a 10 man tag? Truth, Hardy, Finley and Morrison versus the Straight Society and Drew McDonald and Dolph Ziggler. Neither of our guys start the match. Punk gets in against Truth eventually and he headbutts him in the gut. Truth quickly throws him across the ring. Truth tags Hardy whilst Punk dumps in his nappy of fear. Hardy is all over him. These two have a bit of a feud going on. The Bulldog for Matt Hardy gets him a two. He tries to dive but Punk jabs him in the gut. Nothing's really happening and fortunately Ziggler and McDonald are wrestling most of this match. I was worried this would happen. The match breaks down and everyone hits finishers. Punk with the go to sleep on Finley before he's kicked by Truth. Gallows has done nothing this whole match and he finally rushes the ring with a double clothesline. Morrison takes him out of a springboard kick. The Starship Pain beats Ziggler. I don't know what happened here, both Punk and Gallows were overshadowed, it's a D. Before the next match, Punk cuts a promo saying that before he met Gallows he was just like the people in the audience. That's pretty harsh on the audience. I was surprised to see Gallows grab the mic and push the straight edge agenda. He speaks clearly and seems like he's in love with Punk. Punk's doing this thing where he inducts audience members into the straight society and shaving them bold. Match 4, Smackdown, number 1 contendership for the tag titles, 4 way tag. You know, I've noticed that all these matches on the network have simple descriptions, not naming the wrestlers. Someone's getting the Benoit treatment, it ain't Punk. It's the Straight Edge Society vs Matt Hardy and Carly vs the Hart Dynasty of Natalia Neidfart vs Crime Time. Man, I forgot how much energy these two guys brought to the building. Nothing's happening. We come back from an advert break with Gallows and Carly having a stare down. Gallows slaps him, which is a bad decision because the great Carly smacks him all over the ring. JTG tags himself in and almost pins Gallows, but he turns it around quickly with a side slam. CM Punk is in the match for the very first time. He doesn't do well. He's hit with a Japanese arm drag and a drop kick. Punk ends up in the wrong corner and JTG hits him with a face buster for a two. The match yet again breaks down with everyone being chucked to the outside. Punk's still in the ring and he tries to go to sleep, which is reversed. Gallows makes the blind tag just as JTG does a swing blade. Gallows rushes the ring with a boot and a choke bomb. So it's the same finish as a match a few matches ago. I'm still impressed at the strength of Gallows booking so far. I remember him being a joke. They are now the number one contenders. It's a C, decent win, but not much improvement. One of the people they ended up shaving was Serena Deeb, who actually ended up joining the group properly. Match 5, Raw, tag team title match, freeway. The Straight Society, who are now joined by Serena Deeb versus the Champions DX versus Show Miz. Michaels and Punk will start this one, so you can't really go wrong. Punk knees him in the jaw in the corner and follows it with a bulldog for a two. Big Show barges into the match and almost squashes Punk and Michaels in the corner, but they dodge him. The other three get the tag. Gallows in the game try to take down the Big Show, which they can't manage. The Big Show is unstoppable. Gallows is clotheslined down. He doesn't look like he can succeed in this environment. Gallows forward rolls away to tag Punk in. It just looks stupid for some reason. Punk runs into a boot from the game. It's not going well for the society. Something finally happens as Punk gets a two from a drop kick. It's immediately turned around for Jaw Breaker. He's smashed in the corner, but Serena Deeb interferes to stop the Miz from diving. HBK gets a hot tag and Punk hits the mat over and over again. Shawn Michaels hits a really bad diving elbow from the top. I think he slipped. Gallo stops Sweetchin Music with a big bold boy clothesline before he's cleared from the ring. And seconds later, Michaels does connect with Sweetchin Music anyway. Which eliminates our guys. The match and the titles are eventually won by Show Miz. No, this match just didn't work for me, brother. Our guys barely Shove managed it. a thing. It's an S. Match 6, Smackdown Tag. The Straight Society with Serena versus John Morrison and R Truth. Punk seems to find Truth's entrances really funny. Morrison and Punk to start here. Morrison with a go behind and a roll up almost straight away. John Morrison is out wrestling him in the early going. Truth joins the match and they hit Punk with a double gut buster. CM Punk eventually fights off a submission attempt with a backdrop. Gallows has the tag but he's quickly reversed and he also misses his splash in the corner. Truth dies on him with a crossbody for a two. An explosion of flames happens on the entrance ramp which stops everybody in their path but nothing happens. During the break it's Gallows with a nice backbreaker on Truth. He hits a punch combination in the corner. This guy truly is the underfaker. Gallows randomly kicks Morrison off the ring apron and follows that with a splash in the corner on Truth. Gallows keeps going and he powers Truth over with a suplex. Truth backs Gallows into corner so Punk tags in. 
He throws Truth into the rope and he punches him in the back, but when he tries to do it again, Truth turns around and punches him. There's no need to grin. Truth is trying his comeback, which Punk shuts down the kick. Gallo's back in with some basic brawling offense. He hits the scoop slam and tags Punk again. Punk takes way too long with his dive into the ring and he's drop kicked. He should have learned from the last time that happened. Morrison gets the tag, Morrison boots him in the face, followed by a shining wizard for a two. Gallows yells at Punk on the ring apron to get up, so Morrison smashes him with a springboard kick. What's fair is fair. They're fighting on the apron, but Morrison misses Punk and kicks the ring post. Punk zones in on the ankle. The ref is boring and drags Punk off and he rings the bell. Morrison is too injured to continue. Truth keeps fighting Punk and Serena has to protect her leader. Gallows jumps Truth from behind and hits a big choke bomb. Rey Mysterio tries to stop them from doing anything else, and he does okay until Punk cripples him with a clothesline. They do that back break a diving knee thing again. Been a while since we've seen that one. Hey, at least this group's being booked to look like a threat. I'll take it. It's a B for the entire thing. Match 7, SmackDown, six-man tag. The Straight Edge Society with Serena. Yet yeah, Darren Young very briefly joined the group. It was because he was Punk's NXT rookie. So it's Young, Gallows and Punk, and they take on the heart dynasty of Natalia Nidefar and Rey Mysterio. CM Punk is looking scruffier as the weeks go by. Gallows and Hart Smith will start this one. Gallows with an uppercut and a splash in the corner. He's soon stopped when he runs into a snap slam from DH Smith. Tag is made and Mysterio and Tyson both go low with drop kicks to the head. Gallows has to tag out. Punk does a little better against Tyson briefly before an arm drag is reversed. More triple teaming, the dynasty suplex Punk as Mysterio springboards into him. Nice move, but it's just a two. Punk turns it around and drop kicks Ray, smashing him into the turnbuckle. Mysterio manages to get Punk on the ropes in return, but he dumps in his nappy and runs away before the 619 can happen. The Miz is on commentary and he's very excited to show off his Blue Peter badge. Love how he's trying to play a cool character, but he's literally wearing one of the lamest things possible. Gallows has the tag and he boots Tyson Kidd as he tries a springboard. That looked pretty cool. For some reason, Darren Young keeps staring at Gallows with a mixture of love and anger. Tyson has been well and truly isolated. He gets a backbreaker from CM Punk now. Punk tries to stop the Tyson tag, but when he turns around, Tyson kicks him and he tags out. DH Smith is a hawk on fire. It allows Tyson Kidd to cannon pull Gallows off the ring apron. It looks like it's over in the ring with a Punk kick, but that's just a two. DH Smith still has something left in the tank and he lands a drop toe hold into the turnbuckle. Ray does a 619 on the ring apron and then DH Smith finishes him off with a power slam. Ultra competitive match here, but it feels like the push has come to a halt. Gallows doesn't look half as dangerous anymore, he just seems to disappear towards the end of the match and never comes back. This one's a C. Match 8, Raw main event, 6 man tag, Triple H, Edge and Rey Mysterio vs Punk, Gallows with Serena and they team with Y2J, Chris Jericho. Still lots of big names in the 2010 WWE roster. What was the year the roster really started going downhill? Punk is an idiot and falls out of the ring, and this of course is done just so Ray can hit a big dive out of the ring for the advert break. There's no need to shake. Once we're back, it's Punk and Mysterio going at it. Ray tries a wheelbarrow, which Punk counters, dropping him on the turnbuckle. Gallows is tagged in with some basic brawling offense. That's it, and Jericho has the tag. After a very long time, Edge gets in the ring. He kicks Gallows in the head and hits diving shoulder tackle. Gallows tries a slam, which Edge counters. He starts tearing out his chunks of hair and gritting his teeth with anger. Jericho has now dragged Edge out the ring to stop him doing anything. Edge has an injured leg and Punk is like a smart shell in blood, or Billy Gunn smelling the rock's ass. Anyway, nothing's really happening, it's just everybody slowly working on Edge's leg. Gallows eventually costs his team as Edge hits him with a diving clothesline. Triple H tags in and he puts his knee to good use a couple of times on Punk's face. The clothesline gets him a two. Punk then runs into the cab driver slam, the cab driver slam, it's over. No, it's not, because he wants the pedigree. But no, Gallows clotheslines him off. Ray hits Gallows with a seated senton. There's bodies flying everywhere. It all leads to the 619 on Punk into the game pedigree. Why has everything changed? It started out so well, but this is what I remember them doing. They just lost time and time again. It's a D. Match 9, Smackdown Tag. The Stretch Society with Serena versus Ray Mysterio and Kane. Oh no, not Kane. He's usually a run-ender on Ring of the Hawk. Just hit him with a chair, Punk, and get the match thrown out. It's not worth it. He will make you J-O-B. Punk contemplates this as he whispers in Gallo's ear. Unfortunately, they decide on trying to isolate Ray instead. Gallo's frantically slams Ray and drops his elbow a couple of times. Punk is in, but so is Kane. Run for a chair, Punk. Oh, this ain't gonna be good. We come back from an advert break with Kane all over Luke Gallo's. Surprisingly, Gallo's clotheslines him down. Punk tries to springboard in, but he's caught with a throat thrust. Mysterio tags in and drop kicks Punk. Punk desperately throws Ray into the turnbuckle and knees him in the jaw. He senses they have a second chance to keep Ray in the match. The society keep cheating to keep Ray isolated. 
After a long period of nothing, Gallows tries to slam Ray, who turns it into a DDT. Oh no, Kane has the tag. Kiss this run, good night. Side slam on Punk. Is it over? Diving clothesline from Kane. Is it over now? Big boot from Kane. Oh no. Ray Mysterio dives off Kane's shoulders with a splash. It's still not over. Serena stops the 619 from happening as Kane and Gallows brawl into the crowd. This is our last chance to win this match now. End in Punk. Ray tries a lion soul, Punk catching him on his shoulders. Ray tries to roll him into a pin, but Punk sits down and he's won the match. I can't believe it. They've won. Yeah, screw you, big bold machine. I'm not even going to let Rey Mysterio beating up Punk after the match and his haircut even affect me because I really thought this match would be a run ender. No one beats Kane on Ring of the Hawk. It's a B and that ending was beautiful. Match 10, Smackdown tag. Luke Gallows and CM Punk with Serena versus MVP and Rey Mysterio. It feels like it's almost over straight away after a Ray kick, but Punk manages to bail for the ring before it gets worse for him. We come back from the break with Luke Gallows and MVP squaring off. Not two usual characters you see together. MVP does one knockdown and tags Ray. MVP drops Ray into a splash for a two. Gallows fights off a Ray DDT now and he hits a big boot. That's about all he ever seems to do nowadays. CM Punk can do a bit more and he back drops Ray and hits a leg drop. Not once, not twice, but thrice and it sure wasn't nice. Now it's a suplex into a splash from Luke Gallows. I have to admit, I do like his uppercut. After a big DDT, Ray tags out. It's a pretty nice hot tag for MVP. He throws Gallows overhead for big belly to belly. The balling elbow drop only gets a two because Punk's here. Ray takes Punk away at the seated sent on. Luke Gallows is hit with the 619 and MVP immediately hits the 305 for the end of the match. I have no recollection of that even being his finisher. I thought it was the playmaker. Did I imagine that? A masked hooded figure takes out Rey Mysterio and runs away. For a five minute match, there wasn't really much here. It's a D. What I will say is I also have no recollection of Gallows getting so much mic time as he preaches to the crowd about needing to lead a straight edge lifestyle. It's all right, actually. Match 11, SmackDown. It's the exact same as the last match. Rey Mysterio and MVP versus the Straight Edge Society. Gallows has a new look. Well, he has a new coat, at least. We get some early teamwork from Mysterio and MVP as they get a two count from a Rey splash. More teamwork leads to an MVP big boot. Serena distracts MVP, which allows Gallows to pull him off the ropes. This match is different to the last one because it's MVP that's isolated instead of Ray. Gallo's move pool seems to be decreasing on a match-by-match -match basis. I've not seen anything other than big boots or splashes for ages now. Punk still has moves and he hits MVP with a nice spin kick for a two. Despite their best efforts, Mysterio eventually tags in and they're pretty much screwed now. Ray seated Sentinel on Gallo's followed by the springboard crossbody. Now it's a wheelbarrow bulldog. Gallows tries a move, but as established, he isn't capable of one. Ray tries the 619 just as Punk springboards into the ring of a clothesline. Really nice, but that's just a two. Punk can't hit go to sleep and he's almost rolled up. The hooded stranger is back, distracting Mysterio. CM Punk looks to capitalise with a turtle whirl, which has turned into a pin, and Ray wins it. It seems like Ray is the run-ender in this video, but what if I told you it was about to get a whole lot worse? This one's a C. CM Punk has his arm broken, his hair shaved off, and the masked hooded man turned out to be Joey Mercury for some reason. Okay, I literally have zero recollection of him being part of this group. What, has the hawk slipped into the twilight zone or something? Punk is tired of all their losses. Match 12, Smackdown, six-man tag. Punk, Mercury, and Gallows. Joey Mercury looks like Eric Young when he had a bold head. Why did they make Serena get enhancement when she has a bold head too? Seems a bit silly to me. And they take on JTG, MVP, and Chris Masters. Surely we can win this one. These guys don't even get an entrance. Gallo still can't hit any moves. MVP hits punches and a drop toe hold and a running knee to the back of Melonhead. Gallo's managed to turn that around with a clothesline. He hits the uppercut and he also hits the splash. How about something new? Punk isn't really involved in this match, just watching his bold boys take care of MVP. Gallo smacks his opponents off the ring apron, but he turns into an MVP jawbreaker. Punk throws a kick at him from the apron, which is literally his only involvement in the match, and then Gallows wins with a big boot. Surprisingly, the biggest squash match of this video. MVP didn't even manage to tag out. It's an S because oh, no. there's literally nothing happening here. You could skip this one and you wouldn't have missed anything. Match 13, SummerSlam 2010. Wow, they actually got on pay-per-view. Good for them. Oh no, they'd be better off if they hadn't got on pay-per-view. Three on one handicap match. The Stretch Society, Gallows, Mercury and Punk with Serena versus the final boss. The Big Show. I know what I said about Kane earlier, but The Big Show has ended several videos too. 
In fact, he's probably been the most effective individual I can think of on Ring of the Hawk. It would take hours for me to work out who has the most Ring of the Hawk opponent wins, but the smart money would be on the big show. The Strayed Society know they're screwed. This is one of those handicap matches where everybody is allowed in the ring at once. Despite their obvious advantage, they attack the big show one at a time and they all get beaten up and have to bail. They have a team talk. Unless the talk involves smacking the big show of weapons, it's not going to work, punk. Big show carries on beating them all up with ease. Mercury is choke bombed to the mat. Thanks for coming. Big Show picks him up again and throws him out of the ring into Gallows. Punk has a lie down on some steps. Fortunately, Big Show misses his chop. The Society desperately slam into the Big Show on the outside of the ring. Apparently, handicap matches have no count out rules. We're finally in the ring. Luke Gallows hits a big splash on Big Show. They all hit attacks, but they barely look like they're having an effect. Big Show wakes up and starts throwing the bold boys round again. As he hits the double shoulder block, I just sit here thinking, God, I hate this man. Punk manages to fight off a choke slam of a kick. He hits a knee to the jaw, not once, not twice, but thrice, and I sure wasn't nice. Punk and Mercury do a double team DDT to the Big Show, he kicks out of authority. CM Punk strikes a little nothing on the Big Show. He picks up Punk and chokes Mercury at the same time, with Gallows making the save with the boot, but that causes Punk to fall out of the ring. The big punch on Gallows, followed by the choke slam on Mercury on top of Gallows, ends the match. Wow, they lost a 3 on 1 handicap match, where they were all allowed in the ring at the same time. They play it off like Punk sacrificed his men and it was his fault that they lost, but come on, he was dumped from the ring and it was game over already. Oh no, my it's an God. F. The run ender strikes again. Match 14, final match, 2 on 1 handicap match, the big goofball. Wow, he really is a run ender, versus Punk and Gallows with Mercury. Serena has been legitimately fired at this point. She was criticised by the WWE for not being straight edge in real life. She had been seen out drinking in public, which is of course the opposite of what the society represented. Anyway, back on subject, I don't see how they think they have any chance. They couldn't win a 3-on-1, so what makes them think they can win a 2-on-1? I have to confess, I like Big Show's back elbow to Gallows. Punk tries to use his pace against Big Show for dropkick through the ropes. Show fights him off and dumps him back in the ring. He misses his chop though. The only good moment of this one is Big Show crashing into the ring steps. As established, Gallows doesn't have any moves, so he just does two splashes. It's not enough and Gallows is side slammed. Punk's face says it all. For some reason, the Big Show does a hoe train tribute. He's not even taking this match seriously. The big idiot chokes Gallows and pushes him into Punk to knock him off the apron. Oh wow, actually a cool moment to end the match. The Big Show with the alley-oop in 2010. And then for some reason, Big Show does a camel clutch for the tap out win. Game over, Suck it's an ass. It went exactly as expected. They couldn't do a thing to the run ender. The final boss strikes again. Punk is a bad loser and attacks Gallows. Just for closure, I guess. I really don't need closure, but it's forced on me. Punk and Gallows will now have a mini feud. Gallows tells Punk that when he beats him, he's going to have a beer to celebrate. But Gallows never gets his beer because Punk beats him in three minutes, and Gallows will be released from the WWE a month later. It's over. The Straight Society actually started out pretty nicely. They looked like a threat. They had some nice moves, good promo segments, and I had high hopes for them. Most of their matches were 10 minutes long. They were trying in the ring. But it just felt like the WWE gave up on them for no reason. Now it's rumoured that executives and HBK also were uncomfortable with the way Punk was almost acting like a religious figure, and they thought his promos were pushing it too far. Because this is the PG era, and anything entertaining is bad. For the record, it's probably the most I've enjoyed a Punk promo. The cult leader criticising the audience constantly got him some great crowd heat, and it should have led to a title reign. But like most things on this channel, it was completely squashed by the big show ender. All that's left to do is shove the Straight Edge Society a final grade for Ring of the Hawk Season 3. I'm going to factor in that it did start out as a nice idea, and the crowd reactions as heels, and the promos. Now the run itself was bad, and they will be forever regarded as a forgotten chapter in the WWE. I think taking everything into account, not just their win-loss record, the fairest thing to do is to give the Straight Edge Society a middle of the road C. And I'll send the big show to your house if you don't agree.